Hello, hello, good evening. Hello, everyone. On Facebook, on Instagram, welcome. Today is the last day, and I'm excited at how far God has helped us and what He's going to do tonight as we wrap up this annual prayer meeting for our children. Hallelujah. As you come in, I just encourage you, please continue to worship, continue to magnify the King of Kings. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You are greater than the greatest. You are the mighty one. You are the I am that I am. Thank you for tonight. Thank you for what you are set to do. The one who made a way where there seems to be no way. You are the one who's constantly ahead of the enemy. You are constantly standing, oh God, even in our favor. You are constantly making things to work out. For us, Lord, we bless you. Lord, we worship you. Blessed, blessed be thy name. Great and mighty God. The God who is greater than the greatest. Before time began, you were. You are and you will continue to be. Tonight we just acknowledge you as God. You are great. You are mighty. You are holy. You are righteous. You are faithful. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. Hallowed be thy name. Who is like unto thee, O God? Who can compare with you? All together lovely. All together worthy. All together wonderful. We acknowledge you as God the maker of the heavens and the earth. Tonight we bring you praise. Tonight we bring you adoration. Tonight we worship you for who you are, for all that you do. You are the one who does impossible things. You specialize in impossibilities and we worship you. You are beyond what we can describe. Your power, your greatness is beyond what we can interpret or translate or, or equate with anything or compare with anything. You are the almighty God. Tonight we bless you. Tonight we worship you. Thank you because you're always mindful of us, mindful of our children, mindful of our state. Lord, we are grateful. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, our helper. Tonight we trust in you that you will help us. We welcome you tonight for, to, to help us, Holy Spirit. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for tonight. Thank you because you will help us. Thank you because you'll strengthen us. Thank you because your grace will be multiplied and sufficient for us. Thank you for what you're set to do tonight. We we'll worship you, Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Helper, the Enabler. We we'll worship you. I welcome you on Instagram and I welcome you on Facebook. As you, continue, as you would come in, I want you to begin to bless the name of the Lord. I want you to begin to worship Him. I want you to begin to exalt Him. Thank you for what you're set to do tonight. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. Our strength, our helper, we welcome you. Our shield, our defense, we welcome you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for what you're set to do tonight. We welcome you, Spirit of God. Holy Spirit, our strength, our shield, we welcome you tonight. We welcome you tonight. Thank you for where two or three are gathered in your name. There you are in the midst of them. Thank you for being in our midst. Thank you for you are set to do us good. You are said to do so well. We bless you. We honor you. We magnify you. Oh, labor is so too. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We say welcome, Holy Spirit. Thank you, the Spirit of God. Thank you because you will help us tonight. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Rabba Baba Baso Tirianika Handalaba. Zegedebo Shetiria. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Our strength, our shield, our help, and our buckler. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, and we say thank you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we have worshipped. Good evening, everyone. My name is Omola Raishola. I'm the host of Possibilities Divine. And I'm excited that today is the day that the Lord has made as we wrap up 
wrap up this prayer session. We started on Monday and we've been praying for our children. We prayed for our firstborn children on Monday. We prayed for our sons yesterday. And today we are praying for our daughters as we wrap up this session. I want us to just begin to bless the name of the Lord. I just want, to, want us to begin to exalt the name of the King of Kings, Jehovah Shama, uh, uh, the show Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Sikenu, the God who is everything and all things unto us. Lord, we bless you. You are the one who strengthens us. You are the one who enables us. Over the lives of our children, we bring you gratitude. We bring you praise. We bring you worship. We thank you for the privilege of being called mothers. We thank you for those children that are blessings that you have given unto us, even to care for. Thank you for the privileged position of motherhood that we can stand even to represent you in the lives of our children. Tonight, we give you glory. Tonight, we give you honor. Tonight, we give you praise in the name of Jesus. Precious Holy Spirit, we welcome come you we ask that you will strengthen us even as we pray tonight that we will pray the mind of the father we will pray your will into the lives of our children in the name of jesus precious holy spirit we submit ourselves unto your spirit that you will strengthen us that you will help us that as we pray tonight we will not pray amiss we will pray appropriately and as we pray you will hear our prayers you will give us testimonies in the name of jesus thank you everlasting father in jesus name we have prayed Tonight, like I said, we are praying for our daughters and our prayer focus is the continuation or the B part of our focus scripture. Our focus scripture is from the book of Psalms, chapter 144, verse 12. And the B part says that our daughters may be as cornerstones polished after the similitude of a palace. What is a cornerstone? A cornerstone forms the base of the corner of a building. It joins two walls. It ensures proper alignment of the rest of the building. As a matter of fact, the entire building takes its significance or alignment from that cornerstone. So it is a reference point. It is significant. It is precious. It is important. It is crucial to the support of the frame and structure of the entire house. Everything finds its definition in this piece. Being a cornerstone connotes strength. We're looking at strength spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, and in all ways. And if, if the prayer is that our daughters may be as cornerstones, therefore we are asking for strength for them to be able to carry out this responsibility. If God in his infinite mercy sees a woman or a, a female as a corner piece, then it requires you know, fortification, strength, all sorts of strength, all manner of uh, strength in every dimension to be able to carry out this responsibility. And we, we see this at creation. When God created man, he was specific, go and do this. But when he created the female gender, he said, you will support. That is because God has deposited so much in the woman that he just expects us to manifest, to support. It, it, a weakling cannot support. It takes a person of strength to support. And that is why when God made the woman, she didn't make her to be in charge. She made her to support because you require strength to support. And so Psalms 118 verse 14, it says, The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. For our daughters to be what God has created them to be, for them to manifest every manner of of, of significance and importance, they need to have that strength. And they can only have that strength from the Lord. I want us to begin to thank God for our daughters, for as many of us that have daughters. I want us to begin to recognize the strength that God has deposited in these daughters and begin to appreciate God even on behalf of our daughters. Father, I thank you for my daughters. I thank you for strength, physical strength. I thank you for emotional strength. I thank you for spiritual strength. I thank you, Father God, for ability to think on their feet. I thank you, Father God, for grace, in, 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 for, for being initiative, for being creative. Thank you, Father, for the intelligence. Thank you, Father God, for all the giftings and blessings that you have deposited into these daughters. I give you glory and honor. I thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I accept this, I say, accept my thanks, O oh God, even over the lives of my daughters. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. We are going to begin to pray for our, our daughters. Lord, you will be my daughter's strength. There are some people who are, who are very strong. They're just physically strong. It's all, it's all energy, no brain. We're going to pray, Father, be my daughter's strength. 
be their song so that they will they will have they will have a balance they will have physical strength they will have spiritual strength they will have emotional strength they will have every form of strength that is required even to live a good life shall we begin to pray father tonight i present my daughters unto you i pray father god that you'll be their strength because the psalmist says the lord is my strength and song be my daughter's strength be their strong strength be their song in the name of jesus father cause my daughters to draw the strength from you that they will not depend on the physical ability and talent but that they will draw their strength from you in the name of jesus father i pray in the name of jesus that my daughters will draw their strength from you they will draw their the, the ability from you in the name of jesus lord in the name of jesus you will strengthen them in jesus name we have prayed we are going to pray for inner and outer strength for our daughters you know there are people who are physically strong they look the part but they can't do the part because anything happens they, their heart quaver and caves in but we're going to ask for inner and outer strength for our daughters that my daughter you will be sensible you will be strong emotionally you'll be strong physically you'll be strong spiritually you'll be strong in terms of your career you'll be strong financially you'll be strong in every aspect of life in the name of jesus the lord shall be your strength and your song in the mighty name of jesus i pray for my daughter you will be strong from the inside onto the outside in the name of jesus you will not be fickle you will not be feeble in your emotions the lord will strengthen you from the inside on the uh, onto the outside you will not be tossed right left and about by every wave of doctrine of emotions of of activities in the name of Jesus but you will be strengthened you will be solid you'll be strong in the name of Jesus in Jesus name we have prayed many years ago I had a friend you know you know she was a friend's friend actually she was new to the environment and I was saying you know um, some of the things to do she said me with this my roundabout she had a very beautiful ship she said with this my roundabout I can get anything that I want and yes to some degree she was able to but whatever you will build that would last have to have a good source so that our children will not depend only on their intellectual capacity they will not depend on the shapely figure their beauty their faces or whatever but that they will draw their strength from god because that is lasting strength and that is where when their strength comes from the lord then it would last i want us to begin to pray father my children will not depend only on their physical traits they will not de depend on their human traits alone but they will realize that true and lasting strength comes from you therefore lord i pray in the name of jesus that my children will draw the strength that my daughters will draw their strength strength from you in the name of jesus you will cause them to be strong they will not limit their strength god even to the physical being or the physical traits in the name of jesus they will not build their strength and their structure on transient traits in the name of jesus thank you everlasting father in jesus name we have prayed you know there are people who are who are kind but they are naive there are there are people who are good people but because of their simplicity bad things sometimes have to happen to them we're going to pray for our daughters. My daughters, you will not be naive. You will not be simpletons. But you will be wise women. Women of courage, women of understanding. Women who will understand what they need to do. And they will, be, will, they will take their, their direction and initiative from the Spirit of God. A lot of people who had their journey in life derailed, detoured, because they were naive and simple. And because they were, they, 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 you know, they just take everything at, at face value. But you discover the people who are wise don't take things at face value. They dig deep. We're going to pray for our daughters. Father, in the name of Jesus, my daughters will not be naive. They will not be simple. They will not be tossed to and fro by emotions in the name of Jesus. This is my prayer for my daughters, that they will be wise. They will be strong. They will be, uh, the, the, the strength will come from the Lord. It will not be the, the worldly wisdom. But Father God, it will be the wisdom that comes from you. I pray, Father God, for my daughters tonight. They will not be naive. They will not be naive. They will not be simpletons. But they will be wise by your spirit. They they will be wise by your leading in the name of Jesus. Lord, you will equip them with strength. You will clothe them with strength in the name of Jesus. You will give them wisdom, even in our ramification, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. We need to remember that the purpose of this prayer meeting is to ensure our treasure. And our children are the treasure. Why do you 
uh, ensure anything because you want to protect it against damage, theft, vandality, and all that. And the same way we protect things, maybe your jewelry or maybe your car, maybe your home, everything that you can ensure, the same way we can ensure our children. And there are details that go into insurance. And so that's why we are touching every detail, every area in the lives of our children so that they can be insured. We are going to pray. We're going to ask the Lord that our, da our daughters will be women that bring value and quality to the table of life. Sometimes there's this saying, they, they'll say, what do you bring to the table? And it is true that our daughters will be women of value who will bring value to the table of life. They will bring quality to the table of life by reason of their lives, by reason of every aspect of their lives, that they will bring value to the table of life in the name of Jesus. We are praying that our daughters will not be spectators even in the field of life. They will not be spectators. They will not just be like, okay, we're just skipping numbers we're just keeping a tally we're just joining them so that there'll be a, a crowd that our children will not our daughters will not be just adding to the number of people in any way they find themselves either academically in school in, in their career when the time comes for them to settle down maritally that they will bring value to the table of their lives in the name of Jesus we're asking that they will not be spectators in the important places of life father in the name of Jesus this is our prayer that our daughters will be significant like cornerstones they will be precious they will be relevant Relevant. They will not be spectators. They will not just be an addition to shock, you know, a building. Sometimes when they when, when they are building and there seems to be a gap, they'll say, let us bring a piece of either block or stone to shock it. And then they will level it up with, with cement. And that will just be a spare. That our daughters will not be spare in the journey of life. They will not be spare tires. They will not be ir irrelevant. But they will be important. They will be significant in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. The next topic we're going to uh, is from the book of Esther. The next um, scripture is from the book of Esther, chapter 4, verse 16. Esther 4, 16. It says, go, gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan and fast for me. Neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will fast likewise. And so I will go to the king, which is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. This is a statement of a leader. This is a statement of somebody who is strong inside and outside. This is a statement of somebody who knows their identity. We'll remember that prior to this particular verse, I think Esther too had settled into the life of luxury, like soft life, and she was just enjoying herself. And it didn't matter what happened to the rest of the Jews. It didn't matter whether they were going to be slaughtered because anyway, she was going to be protected against the fortified walls. But Mordecai told her, don't think that you and your maids and everybody around you will be safe be because you're in the palace. And so after she got this, as a cornerstone, as a reference point, her brain reset and she realized that I have to do something. I am in the place of significance to do something. We are going to ask God that he will equip our children. You know, there are some people, some children, they don't want to offend anybody. They don't take a stand for anything. And if you don't stand for it, my father used to say, if you don't stand for any, for something, you will fall for anything. And so that our children will be people who are defined, people who are strong. They are convinced about who they are and where they need to stand. Shall we begin to pray? Father, I thank you for my daughters because they are women of bravery and confidence. That our daughters will stand for righteousness and purpose in Jesus' name. I want us to pray that our daughters will stand for righteousness. They will stand for purpose. They will stand for the will of God. They will be brave. They will be bold. The Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. That our daughters will be bold. They will be convinced about whatever they trust, they, they, they stand for in the name of Jesus, that they will not be fickle, that they will not be tossed here and there in the name of Jesus. As the cornerstone joins walls and the structure of the entire house takes its reference from it, our daughters shall be ref reference points for greatness in the name of Jesus. They will be reference points for positive for, for positive influence in the name of Jesus. Tonight I pray for my daughters, you will be strong, you will be the reference point for good things, you will be reference point even for positive influence, you will be reference point even for positivity for righteousness in the name of Jesus tonight I pray for my daughters you will you will, you will not follow the crowd to do wrong you will not follow the crowd to do wrong you will not follow the crowd to do wrong you will be convinced you you will stand for what is right you will pursue it in the name of Jesus you will influence others to do that which is right in the name of Jesus thank you Almighty God in Jesus name we have prayed you know we're going to pray also for our daughters that they will not cower they will not be timid where they're supposed to stand for what is right a lot of times people just say, you know, I don't want to have, I don't want to acquire enemy. So they don't have any viewpoint. They don't stand for anything. And so 
wickedness can prevail but because you know it doesn't concern me i don't want anybody to to call me out and so they will not stand for anything but when you don't stand for anything then it becomes very easy for you to be swept over by anything we are going to pray for our daughters you will not cower where you are supposed to show confidence you will not be timid where you're supposed to 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 to, to stand for the downtrodden to stand for those who have no support you will be an advocate even where people are being walked over the lord will build you up in the name of jesus you will be you will be a voice f- f- to the voiceless you'll be a voice for those who do, who do not have anybody to support them in the name of jesus we are praying for our children as a cornerstone in every aspect of life that the, the milk of kindness will flow from our daughters that they will not be they will not be harsh I know that some people they don't care if they're dealing with money that they just want to say if my money is my money i work out for my money and you know towards their parents towards their loved ones they don't care but we're going to pray that our children our daughters especially the milk of kindness will flow from them they will be kind to us they will be kind to those around them they will be kind to the downtrodden in the name of jesus shall we begin to pray father i pray for my daughters today that the milk of kindness and goodness will flow from them in the name of jesus the milk of kindness will flow from them to me it will flow from them to others around them it will flow from them to their siblings their friends and everyone related to them in the name of jesus thank you almighty god we declare oh god that you will help them you will help them you will show them the way that they need to follow and they will not become hard in the name of jesus the society we're living in is hardening people hardening children raising children to be tough and hard negatively in this generation but our own children they will not be harsh they will not be hard they will develop the milk of kindness and it will flow to them a uh, flow from them to everyone around them thank you everlasting father in jesus name we have prayed esther as a queen could advocate for her people because of the position she occupied esther as a queen could advocate and and she, at the end of the day she saved her people because she occupied a platform we are going to pray for our children that our children the lord will exalt their horn in life well i have a i have an older sister she she has a platform she is a big woman in terms of money she is rich in her career she is distinguished and you know she is a christian solid these are the kind of things that we're asking for our daughters that they will not be they will not be feeble so that they will not become like burden bearers. When I say burden bearers, camels are, are their animals who bear burdens. That's what they're created for. We are going to pray for our daughters that my daughters will not be weight bearers. They will not be burden bearers. They will not be enslaved because of to, com- to bring convenience to other people. I want us to pray that our daughters will not be enslaved to bring convenience to others. They will not be camels. They will not be like camels who labor, who bear weight and burdens for others, but that they will, they, they will be, you know, a corner piece still holds the structure of the house, but it is, there, you know, it's a significant portion of the house so that they will not be at a disadvantage or in life. I want us to pray for our daughters. My daughters, you will not be at a disadvantage in life. Your boldness, your character, your strength will, will show up for you positively in the name of Jesus. You will not be a weight bearer. You will not be a use for other people's convenience in the name of Jesus. Do you know that there are relationships where people are used just to make the life of others convenient? There are people who have friends. Their friends are users. But we are going to pray for our daughters. You will not be used for other people's convenience in the name of Jesus. In in every relationship in every association that you find yourself you will not be used for other people's convenience i declare by the spirit of god you will not be enslaved in any relationship there are some relationships where people are involved and sometimes it could be it could be man woman relationship sometimes it could be friendship and one person will be serving the other it's whatever they say and because maybe they have influence they have clout they have they're popular their friends just will you know serve them that our children will not be subservient to their mates. That our, ch- our daughters will not be subservient to their friends. That their our daughters will not be subservient to their husbands. But that there will be a balance in their relationships. In the name of Jesus. Father, we are praying for our daughters. That you give them influence. That you give them strength. That you give them confidence. You give them a platform. That they will not be enslaved in any way, manner, or form. They will not be enslaved in their relationships. They will not be enslaved in their friendships. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want us to declare confidence in the lives of our daughters. Confidence that will not require validation from friends. Confidence that will not require validation from ungodly relationships. Confidence that will not require validation from negative influence. 
in the name of Jesus. Mashiketele keseteria, le bragazata yalaba kuseteria, kile makunte ba siketoria. That Lord, our children will be confident in their identity and who you have called them to be. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. You know, sometimes people explore, they look around for acceptance, validation. And that is why some people get into, into sin. Some, some young girls will get into the wrong hands, will find a, a, a man who does not love her, but will say, oh, I love you, I'll buy you this. Because they have not received that same acceptance at home, it's very easy for them to be lured into, into the wrong hands. Or a child that is raised up in a good environment, all of a sudden thinks, okay, maybe I, I don't feel validation from my parents. Let me explore another way of life. Let me explore other options. That's why they get into gender confusion. They'll say, okay, being a boy, I don't feel, I don't think, I, I, I feel like a boy. I want to feel like a girl. And the same goes for a girl. We're going to pray that there will be no negative exploration in the lives of our daughters. That they will, they will be confident enough in their identity, even to be able to walk in who God has created them to be. Shall we begin to pray? Father, tonight I pray for, and I declare confidence in the lives of my daughters, that they will not explore sin for acceptance. They will not explore sin for validation in the name of Jesus. They will not enter into any ungodly relationship for validation, but they will be confident in who you have created them to, to be in the mighty name of Jesus. Every hold, every, every lure from hell, even to, dis to, to, to destroy the identity of our children. Tonight we stand upon the authority of the word of God and we cancel them in the name of Jesus. Every, everything that toys with their ideas, with their minds, even concerning their identity, concerning their gender, today we destroy it in the name of Jesus and we establish them in the truth of who you have called them to be. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Uh, to wrap our second segment up, we're going to pray for strength that our daughter's strength will not be a disadvantage. Sometimes when you're strong, it could be a disadvantage. Go and ask, um, go and ask Rachel. Leah and Rachel were sisters, married. Leah was, I mean, Leah was just so busy. The Bible describes her as a tender eyed. She was just there, married husband, was having children. Meanwhile, the strength of Rachel was described. She was a shepherdess. She was, you know, strong. She was bold. She could get things done. She was, and so, and she was beautiful too. But at the end of the day, her strength almost became a disadvantage. I don't know how many of us have daughters who are strong. They have an idea of what to do at every point. They're always, you know, go-getters. We're going to pray for those daughters that your strength will not be a disadvantage in the name of Jesus. Shall we begin to pray? Father, I pray tonight that my daughter's strength will not be a disadvantage in the name of Jesus. In life, my daughter's strength will not be a disadvantage. It will be an advantage in the name of Jesus. Every gifting, every grace, every blessing that you have deposited in my daughter, it will not be a disadvantage. It will be a blessing in the name of Jesus. Mashakata, my daughter's strength will not count against them. Their strength will not count against them. It will be a plus. It will be an advantage. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. The Bible talks about our daughters being cornerstone and polished. Polished. What does it mean to, to be polished? Sometimes when we describe people as polished, we say they show confidence. They know how to behave. They, they are charming. They are articulate. And they are excellent negotiators. In the book of Esther, chapter 2, verses 15 to 17, it says, Now when the turn came for Esther, the daughter of Abihel, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her as his daughter to go into the king, she requested nothing but what Haggai, the king's eunuch, the custodian of the woman, advised. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all who saw her. So Esther was taken to King Ahasuerus, into his royal palace, in the tenth month, which is the month of Tebeth, in the seventh year of his reign. The king loved Esther more than all the other women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight than all the virgins. So he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. When your daughter is polished, they know how to behave. They earn favor everywhere they turn to. When favor locates you, the right man finds you. He dotes over you as if you are the only woman, that you have no shortcomings, that you have no inadequacies, and even your shortcomings are excused. You seem to know how to do everything. May marital favor locate our daughters in Jesus' name. When your daughters marry well, it saves you from trouble and constant worry. You, you, you feel settled. You act, it seems as if a, a portion of your life is taken care of because you don't have to worry about it. We are going to pray for our daughters. Esther was in captivity. She didn't even qualify to contest. But we're going to pray for our children, our daughters especially, that our daughters will be favored everywhere they turn to. 
that the hand of God will be upon them in the name of Jesus, that our daughters will marry the right men in the name of Jesus, that our daughters will marry after the heart of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're praying for their marital destiny now. Shall we begin to pray? Father, tonight I pray for my daughters. I pray that they will marry the right man. They will marry into the right family. They will not marry into the wrong family. They will not marry into the camp of the enemy. My daughters will not marry, oh God, even into the hands of the wrong person. They will not get married to their enemies. They will not get married to my enemies. Tonight I pray in the name of Jesus. I stand upon the authority of the word of God that I cannot fail. I pray for my daughters in the name of Jesus. You will marry men after the Lord's heart. Men who will love you. Men who will favor you. Men who will dote over you. In the name of Jesus. You will not marry your competition. You will not marry your competition in the name of Jesus. You will not marry someone who will compete with you about life and everything in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. When a woman marries well, she is ushered into her own palace. So a palace is not necessarily a, a king's palace, the the Oni Oni Jebu or Vijebu or something like that. No. Or maybe maybe Buckingham Palace. No. Not everybody will marry into those families. But when you marry your own husband and your home becomes a palace, you are treated like a queen. Everything that you do work out well. That is what we're asking for our daughters. That whoever they're going to marry will be their king. They will mar they will be married into their own palace. Where they where they will be where they will be honored where they will be kept where they will be protected where they will be provided for in the name of jesus i want us to begin to pray father cause my daughters to be married into their own palaces cause them to be married to their own kings cause them to be favored in the name of jesus i pray tonight oh god that my children will not marry into the wrong hands they will not marry into the wrong home in the name of jesus guide their steps order their steps aright cause them oh god even to be uh, to be joined to the bone of the bones and the flesh of the flesh in jesus mighty name we have prayed May I tell you that when a woman marries into a place where everybody sees her as too big for them, that is a trouble. If she marries and the family is looking as if, hmm, hey, everybody will be at the mercy of this one. Oh, she's coming from a rich family. She's coming. And then problem starts. That is one. There's another aspect to it. If you marry into a family that is too big for you, then you never measure up. We are going to pray for our daughters that where whatever family God has ordained for you to get married into, it will be your palace. You will fit in. There will be honor awaiting you. There will be blessings awaiting you. There will be riches awaiting you. There will be favor awaiting you. There will be everything that you require to, to, to live a peaceful life awaiting you. Shall we begin to pray? We pray for our daughters, oh God, that they will be married into the right homes, homes that will become their palaces, families that will become their own fa families where they will be accepted, where they will be loved in the name of Jesus. They will not uh, marry, get married into families where they will be, where the glory will be crushed. They will not get married into families where the glory will be reduced in the name of Jesus. They will get married to the right home where they will be accepted, where they will be, where they will become matriarchs in the name of Jesus. Thank you, faithful father. In Jesus name, we have prayed. We are going to pray that our daughters will be well situated in life. Hmm. Somebody that I know was telling a story. She said, when will this pattern end? She said, she's the one who labors for everything. She provides food. She provides shelter. She takes care of her children. And yet she, she has a husband. She said, when will this pattern end? She said, it was the same pattern with her mother. We're going to pray for our children. Our children will be successful. Our daughters, they'll be successful. They will increase. The Lord will do them well. But they will not be disadvantaged in marriage. Because when you are bearing all the responsibilities that a man is supposed to be bearing, that is a disadvantage. We're going to pray. My daughters, you'll be well situated in life. In the name of Jesus, you will be well situated in life. In the name of Jesus, you will be well situated in the life in the in life. In the name of Jesus, you will not have to bear the burden of two people as you get married. In the name of Jesus, you will be well situated in life. In the name of Jesus, I pray for my daughters in Jesus' name. You will be well situated. You will not marry. You will not marry somebody who is below you, who is lazy, who will not contribute anything to your life. In the name of Jesus, you will marry somebody who will be who will protect you, who will provide for you, regardless of what you have. In 
in the name of Jesus. You will be properly situated in life. You will be well situated in life in the name of Jesus. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. You will be well situated in the name of Jesus. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. We are still praying for our daughters. Your choice in marriage will not displease God. Your choice in marriage will not displease God, either through gender or through the, the actual person that you bring. As Christians, we believe our relationship should be heterosexual. And so this is what we are praying for, that God will situate our children, that they will, they will find, that our daughters will find men after God's heart, that they will not explore sin, even to settle in marriage. They will not explore anything that will displease God. Their choices in life will not displease God. In the name of Jesus, shall we begin to pray. Father, we are praying for our daughters, that they will be well situated in life. They will find the right man to marry them. They will find the bones of their bones to marry them. In the name of Jesus, we come against every gender confusion, every every idea that the enemy is selling in this generation to bring confusion. We cancel in the lives of our daughters. In the mighty name of Jesus, we come against every form of marital deception. In the name of Jesus, in the lives of our daughters, they will not be deceived. Maritally, they will not be deceived in the name of Jesus. They will not be lured into sin in Jesus' name. We have prayed. Sometimes I watched a movie not too long ago. This girl met this young man. The guy was, you know, all over her, provided for her. And, you know, all her friends were like, ah, oh, you know, your life is good now. Well, God has settled you. Until the marriage night that she discovered that her husband was a homosexual. So whatever he did was just a facade to please his parents. We're going to pray. Our children will not be lured into marriage of deception. Our children will not be lured into marriage of deception. In the name of Jesus. They will not be married, in the, married into marriage of deception. In the name of Jesus. Father, tonight we pray for our daughters. In the mighty name of Jesus that you'll give them men after your heart, oh God. Men who walk in the way of the Lord. Men who are sincere. In the mighty name of Jesus. They will not be lured into marriage of deception. They will not be lured into the marriage of error. They will not be lured into marriage of iniquity. In the mighty name of Jesus. You will fortify their lives. You open their eyes. You open their minds. You open their spirit. That they will be rightly connected. They will be matched with the right person. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name we have prayed. In this Canada, many years ago, I know of a lady. When we first got here, everybody, you know, we're looking for jobs. We're looking out to find our feet and survive. This girl was laboring. She worked two jobs at that time. And we said, you know, whenever we invited her for, for anything, she would say, ah, I have to bring my fiancé. He, I mean, he's still back home. You know, they, they both are from Nigeria. This girl labored, paid for the landing fees, paid for this, paid for that. And eventually the, the guy came. So we, you know, we lost touch. And we just, we just ran into her one of those days. So we said, oh, hello, how are you? How are you doing? How are you settling? She said, ah, so how's your house? fiancé now? you guys married? She said, they used me. So the guy, you know, kept on saying, okay, we're going to get married when you get here. Da, 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 da. And the minute he came to Canada, he said, thank you. America is my destination. You have paved the way for me. And he left her. These are real situations. And I can tell you one, two, three stories of such. We're going to pray for our daughters. My daughter, you will not be used because of your personality. You will not be used because of your influence. You will not be used because of your background. But you will be loved. You will be honored. And you will be protected in marriage. Shall we begin to pray? Father, I'm praying for my daughter. You, she will not be used, they will not be used in the name of Jesus. Their ability will not be used in the name of Jesus. Their wisdom will not be used in the name of Jesus. Their personality will not be used in the name of Jesus. But Father, they will be loved. They will be protected in marriage. In the mighty name of Jesus, I separate them, oh God, from every form of user. Friends, marriage partner, in the name of Jesus. My daughters, you will not be used in the name of Jesus. Your grace will not be used in the name of Jesus. It will not be used, it will not be taken advantage of. Anybody that you have no business with will not come to your path even to take advantage of you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. We are going to pray against disgrace in any form or manner. We are going to pray our children will not experience disgrace. Genesis chapter 34 verses 1 to 4. Genesis 34 verses 1 to 4. It says, Now Dina, the daughter of Leah, whom she had born to Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. And when Shechem, the son of Hamor, the Hevite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her and lay with her, violated her. His soul was strongly attracted to Dinah, the son of Jacob. And he loved the young woman and spoke kindly to the young woman. So Shechem spoke to his father, Hamor, saying, get me this young woman as a wife. No matter the height or level of civilization, there's always a proper way of doing things. 
culturally, spiritually, scientifically, physically, there is order. And anywhere there is no order, there is chaos or anarchy. And we know things don't work out well in that in such environment. Shechem was a lawless person. That's how they roll in their community. You know, just a hey, fine girl, mm, come. And then he raped her. And they said, I love her, I love her, just get her for me. That is not how things are done. The same way, we are going to pray for our daughters. That our daughter will not have affinity for worldliness. De Dina must have lived a very protected life. You know, she had brothers, she was about the only daughter. She had brothers, she must have been protected. Perhaps she just sneaked out of the, she, she sneaked out of the house without telling anybody. She just wanted to explore. She wanted to go on an adventure. She wanted to see what is out there. The same way most of us who are Christian mothers, we train our children, we protect them, we teach them. And when they go out for the first time, it's like, oh my God, this is life. We are going to pray for our daughters. Lord, in the name of Jesus, my daughters will not be inquisitive about godlessness. My daughters will not be inquisitive about godlessness. They, because once they, uh, once they are inquisitive and want to exploit, that's when they get caught. That's when they get trapped. We're going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, my daughters will not be inquisitive about godlessness. In the mighty name of Jesus, my children will not go on an exploration tour of sin and iniquity. In the name of Jesus. Tonight, I pray for my daughters. Lord, in the name of Jesus, there will be women, oh God, after your heart. They will be protected. They will their sensibility will be entrenched in the word of God. They will not give it up even for vanity. They will not give it up in exchange for the world and its sins. They will not give it up even to explore iniquity in the name of Jesus. I pray for my daughters in the name of Jesus that they will not go on the exploration of sin and evil and, and evil that is in the world. Thank you everlasting father. In Jesus name we have prayed. Do you know what happened after Dina was, you know, once she was raped and her brothers took things into their hands and they destroyed that community and it didn't well end well for her. We didn't hear about her afterwards. So she probably became like, you know, an abandoned woman, miserable for the rest of her house and her father's house. We are going to severe every link and entanglement between our daughters and the way of the world, worldliness, negative choices, wrong choices. We're going to pray. Father, I severe my daughters from every negativity or an entanglement that links them to the world in the name of Jesus. Tonight I pray because I know you answer prayers and I ask, oh God, in Jesus' name, severe my daughters from every entanglement and every link between them and the world in the name of Jesus. Every sinful uh, uh, desire, every lustful desire that may be in the, in the heart of my daughters. Father, let there be a severance, O oh God. Let there be a severance in the name of Jesus. Severe them, O oh God, and the link between worldliness and entanglement in the name of Jesus. That they will desire you, that as they have known you, they will not go, uh, go to explore the world of sin in the name of Jesus. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. I have heard about stories of ladies who didn't look for trouble. And yet they get raped, they get violated, either through friendship or even in their own house, and their lives do not remain the same. We are going to pray for our daughters. My daughters, you will not be violated. You will not be defiled. In the name of Jesus. Dina was defiled. It didn't matter what the desire of that boy was. But she, he defiled her. He grabbed her against, against the normal uh, order of things in Israel. And he defiled her. We're going to pray. My daughters, you will not be defiled in the name of Jesus. You will not be violated in the name of Jesus. I pray for my daughters tonight by the power that is in the name of Jesus. You will not be defiled. You will not be violated in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Ah, we're going to pray that our daughters will not be victims of godless adventure. I remember when I was much younger, I too liked adventure. I liked to discover things. And the mercy of God kept me. And we're going to pray the same thing for our daughters, that the mercy of God will keep them. There's so many things to explore in the world. There's so many adventures that as they take on these adventures, oh God, that they will not be victims in the name of Jesus. I want us to pray. Father, tonight I pray for my daughters. They will not be victims of godless adventure. They will not be victims of, of, of sinful adventure in the name of Jesus. I pray for them, oh God, that you watch over them, that you keep them, oh God, in the name of Jesus, in every interaction, in every relationship that you watch over them in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. 
we are going to pray we're going to uproot and terminate every desire for inordinate affection in our daughters sometimes a girl will just come maybe because they've soft the internet and they've taken all sorts of surveys maybe because at one point they felt okay i don't feel like a girl and then they, they, they we have people who are tomboyish and that doesn't make them boys but you know when the enemy begins to make suggestions then you begin to explore those things we are going to pray i uproot and terminate every desire for inordinate affection in my daughters in the name of jesus i uproot them i uproot them and i terminate them in the name of jesus my uh, my daughters will not delve into sinful lifestyle i want us to pray for our daughters in the name of jesus every inordinate affection in the life of my daughters in the name of jesus i uproot them every desire that is not of god i uproot them in the name of jesus regardless of what society says regardless of the approval of the enemy rabba sotai kataba sotoria i uproot and terminate every every desire for inordinate affection Every desire to delve into sinful life secretly or openly. I uproot them in the lives of my children, in the lives of my daughters, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you because they are established in the truth of your word. They will not go to Egypt for help. They will not wander away from you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. The next prayer point quickly, we are going to pray that our, our daughters will not be taken advantage of. I think we, I touched on that earlier on. In the book of Genesis chapter 38 verse 11, Genesis 38, 11. The Bible says, then Judah said to Tamar, his daughter-in-law, remain a widow in your father's house till my son Shelah is grown. For he said, lest he also die like his brothers. And Tamar went and dwelt in her father's house. The background story of this is that Tamar was married to Judah's son. And then the Bible records that that son was wicked before God and God killed him. And so the tradition in Israel is that once one brother dies, the next brother takes over. And so Judah out of fear said, you know what? I'm not going to give Tamar to my son lest he dies. And so Tamar was in her parents' house as a widow. You know, that is a permanent hold upon her life. We're going to start. Anyone, you know, there will be people who will be say, I love you. and uh, I just want things to work out before we get married. They will be engaged one year, two years, three years, four years, five years. That is bondage. We are going to pray that anybody or any relationship that will put a hold upon the life and destinies of our daughters, today we cancel in the name of Jesus. My daughter, your destiny will not be put on hold in the name of Jesus. I pray for my daughters. Today, your destiny will not be put on hold in the name of Jesus. Your destiny will not be put on hold in the name of a relationship. In the mighty name of Jesus, I cover you with the blood of Jesus. Every form of disadvantage through marriage, I cancel it in the life of my daughters in the name of Jesus. Your life, you will not be disadvantaged even in marriage. You will not be disadvantaged in the name of Jesus. Nobody will put you on hold while they, look, while they surf the world around, while they look around for what is not lost. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. The next thing that happened was that as that boy grew, nobody remembered her. She has been on hold, waiting for that boy to grow, and the boy is grown now. It's bad enough that she had to wait, and now she, she's waited, and nobody is even saying, come and marry the son that you're supposed to be married to. Do you know that there are relationships that people will find themselves in? This happened to a friend of mine when we were in university. The, this lady and the brother, they will be following. If you see this person, you see this person. They were always together following each other. And so we thought they were an item until one day. The guy brought a shocker. He brought somebody and he said, uh, so and so, meet so and so. She's like a sister to me. She takes care of me on campus. She's a wonderful person. And she now turned to the lady and said, meet my sweetheart. We are planning our marriage. The girl just tried not to slump because it was too much of number one, embarrassment, disgrace. They had done everything, gone back and forth. They were always together. You know, if there's a function, people will reserve a seat for both of them. And so... He was a time waster. He was a destiny user. And we're going to pray. There's so, so many people like that. They'll say, oh, you know, this person, she's my rock. She's my so-and-so. And then they'll go and bring another girl. They will marry that. And then they'll tell that rock to say, you know, my girlfriend, my fiance doesn't know how to cook. Do you mind helping us cook? Do you mind helping us shop? We're going to pray that our daughters, like I said earlier, that their advantages, their strength will not become a disadvantage, that they will not be used in life. We're going to pray that anyone that will be a glory reducer, 
anyone that will be a user will not come to the path of our daughters in the name of Jesus. Shall we begin to pray? Father, today I pray for my daughters in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the strength that you have given unto them. Thank you because their strength will not be abused. It will not be taken advantage of in the name of Jesus. Anyone who will waste their time will not come their way in Jesus' name. Anyone who will put their whole destiny on hold will not come their way in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. We are going to, oh my God, I knew the daughter's own will be long and um as they have quite a few things to cover however we'll we'll see how god helps us uh we're going to pray that our daughters will not be miserable they will not be frustrated and they will not be mishandled in marriage do you know that there are so many marriages where they have to make an appearance maybe because of a parent status maybe because of one thing or the other and they can't talk to anybody about how they are dying in such relationships we are going to pray my children in the name of jesus you will not be miserable you will not be frustrated you will not be mishandled in marriage shall we begin to pray i declare concerning my daughter you will not be mishandled you will not be at a disadvantage even in marriage in the name of Jesus. You will not be miserable. You will not be frustrated. You will not be mishandled in the name of Jesus. Your path will shine brighter and brighter on account of marriage in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Have we seen people that, you know, once they got married, everything started working up. Work, even they may be from humble backgrounds, but the minute they get married, God really lifts up the head, lifts up the head of their spouses. They begin to do well. The little job that they do is flourishing, and all of a sudden, life is looking good. And then they 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 just become elevated, and marriage looks so good on them. These are the kind of things we are praying for our daughters, that our daughters will be married to the right people. They will be situated in the right environment, that our daughters, their greatness will be enhanced through, through, through marriage. I know of a woman, if I mention her name, you probably know her. She's my mentor. Her husband taught her a few things about life. As a matter of fact, her husband was the one who said, you two can preach, come and preach. That woman now, if you mention her name, if, if you see her husband, you probably have to say, I used to answer her husband because her life has become enhanced on the platform of marriage. Meanwhile, there are other people who were doing great until they got married and their lives took a nosedive. We're going to pray. My, my daughter's lives will be enhanced on the platform of marriage in the name of Jesus. My daughter's, your greatness and your life will be enhanced through marriage in the name of Jesus. Your lights will shine brighter and brighter even through marriage in the name of Jesus. You will not sorrow, sorrow, you will not suffer sorrow even on account of marriage in the name of Jesus. Marriage will be a blessing unto you, my daughters. It will not be a curse. It will not be a burden. It will not be a weight in the name of Jesus. But it will be a platform to elevate you. Lalika Sotoria. It will be a platform to enhance your greatness. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. We are still going to pray. Tama had to be deceitful and manipulative to get what belonged to her. If you read that story in Genesis 38, she had to devise a means. She had to be deceptful deceptive she had to form and you know do all sorts of things that are not supposed that she's not supposed to do just to have her rights and entitlement even so in today's world there are people who have to lie who have to do all sorts of things because they can't speak to their spouses marriage you know when, once the man knows that you're doing better he's looking for a way to pull you down and stuff like that but that will not be our daughter's chill portion we are praying for our daughters tonight that to that they will not suffer sorrow or grief of widowhood in their prime. That is one. That they will not have to be deceptive to have their, 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 their right, even in marriage. Shall we begin to pray? Number one, they will not suffer, will suffer sorrow and grief of widowhood. Number two, they will not have to have to be deceptive even to get their right in marriage. Tonight, Lord, we pray for our daughters, oh God, that they will not suffer grief or widowhood in their prime in the name of Jesus. 
they will not suffer widowhood or they will not suffer widowhood in the prime in the name of Jesus. Lord, you will watch over them. You will watch over their husbands. You will preserve them in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask, oh God, that our daughters will not be, they will not become deceptive so that they can have their rights in marriage in the name of Jesus. There are people who have to tell stories. They have to lie. They have to do anything because they can get anything done in marriage. But Father, this will not be the portion of our children. They will have a voice. They will have a say in their own marriages in the name of Jesus. We are praying for our daughters. Your path will not be darkened in marriage. Your path will not be darkened in marriage in the name of Jesus. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. We have to move very quickly. We are going to pray for our daughters that their path will flourish, that they will be catered for. Every plan of the enemy, every agenda of the enemy concerning their destinies is terminated, is destroyed in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for our daughters in the name of Jesus that their path flourishes and they are catered for in the name of Jesus. You will not have to beg, you will not have to borrow, you will not be small even within your own marriage in the name of Jesus. Every agenda of sorrow and misfortune we cancel in the path of our daughters in Jesus. And every agenda of sorrow and misfortune we stand upon the authority of the word of God and we cancel in the path of our daughters. Our daughters will not be victims of misfortune. They will not be victims of oh God even of, of, of sorrow. Every agenda of sorrow and misfortune we cancel in their destinies. In Jesus name. In Jesus name we have prayed. When we look at the story of Tamar, we see delay, derailment and destruction plain out, plain and simple. After her husband died, she had to wait and then wait and then wait and then her destiny became derailed and then if not because she took things into her hands, her destiny would have been totally destroyed. We're going to pray for our daughters. There'll be no delay. There'll be no derailment. And there'll be no destruction in your destiny. In the name of Jesus. In every aspect of your destiny. Marital, career-wise, academic, spiritual. Whether you are in kindergarten, high school, elementary school, university, working. I declare, oh God, even concerning my daughters, you, there'll be no delay. There'll be no derailment. There'll be no destruction in your destiny in the name of Jesus. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. We are going to pray that concerning the work of our daughters' hands, they will flourish. They will be successful in the mighty name of Jesus. Do you know that when a woman is successful, when she has her own money, and, uh, and you know, when I say her own money, she can still have a job account but when she is successful in whatever she does whether she's a homekeeper or whether she has she goes out to work when a woman is successful she she's a blessing we're going to pray Deborah was a uh, was a judge in Israel Jael was a homemaker and these two women were successful in what they did. They were experts in what they did. We're going to pray for, for, for spirit of excellence, even upon our daughters, that whatever they choose to do in life, that the, ex the spirit of excellence will be upon them. Whether they choose to be homemakers or whether they choose to be career women, the spirit of excellence will be upon them. They will excel, they will flourish, they will do well. In the name of Jesus, I pray for my daughters. In the name of Jesus, your dreams and desire will be, will be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. You will accomplish God's purpose for your life in the name of Jesus. Whether out there in your career or whether you decide to be a homekeeper, whether you decide to have your own business, the hand of the Lord will be upon you. You will flourish. You will succeed in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, faithful father. Thank you because you end up our daughters with, with your blessings to increase and succeed in all that they do. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And um, I want us to pray concerning, um, this was one of the prayer points I was supposed to take. You know, we're about um, wrapping up now. Um, I don't know how many of us who are on this line have you know, sisters of marriageable age, daughters of marriageable age, friends of marriageable age, and you're looking at them day in, day out. It's like, you know, what's going on? Isaiah 34, 16, Isaiah 34, 16, he says, search from the book of the Lord and read, not one of this shall fail, not one shall lack her made, for my mouth has commanded it and his spirit has gathered it. We're going to pray for our daughters, our sisters, our friends who are of marriageable age. We are going to say, Father, wherever their partners are on the surface of the earth, north, south, east, or west, Lord, create a, a orchestrate an occasion for them to meet in the name of Jesus. Because your word says, none shall lack her mate. Therefore, we pray, Father God, even for as many daughters of, of, uh, that are of marriageable age, that the enemy will not toy with them, the enemy will not make wrong suggestions unto them, but Father God, you will, you will bring their mates to them in the name of Jesus. The bone of their bone 
beyond the flesh of the flesh in the mighty name of Jesus we pray oh God as many mothers that are sorrowing as many old mothers that are that are burdened about this that Lord in the name of Jesus this this daughters from today henceforth they stop being a burden they stop being a, a, a concern they become testimonies in the name of Jesus you will cause them to be mothers in their own marriage in homes they will be mothers of children in Jesus name we have prayed there is a mindset that the enemy is projecting out there it is the mindset of you don't need a man you don't need a woman but we're going to pray that our own daughters who are of marriageable age the enemy will not substitute their destiny for 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 any flimsy re reason in the name of jesus there are some of them yes they are working they're successful but the enemy has given them enough reason just to ex excuse either the fear that they, 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 they do not want to confront or maybe just because they have just been oblivious to it or the significance we're going to pray my daughter you will not overlook divine order of dominion mandate when god gave man the dominion mandate he said go and prosper flourish re replenish the earth he gave man the dominion mandate that you know subdue the earth but it was the man and the woman joined together that are able to do that we're going to pray my daughters will not substitute divine order of dominion mandate in the name of Jesus. They will not substitute it for just working. They will not substitute it for just acquiring pets and dogs, but they will fulfill the counsel of the Lord in the name of Jesus. The Lord will touch your heart. Your heart will become heart of flesh, moldable in the heart of the Father. You will do the things that you need to do on time, appropriately, in the name of Jesus. No longer will you push destiny away. No longer will you procrastinate on the things you need to do in the name of Jesus. We thank God for those who are successful, but we pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that our daughters will step onto the plate of life and they will do what they need to do in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. And um, our time is fast spent. And we're going to pray quickly for fruitfulness. Fruitfulness is not only when you have children. Fruitfulness is all, also has to do with your with, with the work of your hands. We are, the, the Bible talks about the, 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 that he's the vine where, where the branches, that we should be fruitful. In our spiritual work with the Lord, God wants us to be fruitful. In our physical life, he wants us to be fruitful. In our finances, he wants us to be fruitful. Concerning our children, he wants us to be fruitful. So I want us to begin to pray for fruitfulness for our daughters in the name of Jesus. For everyone who has a daughter who's already married and you're trusting God for children. Children, and the Lord will give, grant them fruitfulness in the name of Jesus. The Bible says none shall be barren in the land, that our children will not be barren. They will be fruitful. Every daughter that is married, we're looking up unto you for the fruit of the womb. Lord, in the name of Jesus, there, there will be no delay. That they will, that you will give them, oh God, you will cause them to flourish. You will cause them to be fruitful in the name of Jesus. We're going to pray for fruitfulness concerning the work of their hands. That the Lord will bless the work of, the, of our children's life in the academics, in every aspect of their lives. That they will be fruitful in the name of Jesus. We terminate every form of barrenness in whatever manner or form in the lives of our daughters. Thank you in the name of Jesus. There will be sources of joy and blessings everywhere they go. Their lives will not be void of your blessing in the name of Jesus. We come against every barrenness in any format or manner in the lives of our daughters. Thank you, everlasting Father. We give you glory and honor. We give you praise. We thank you for how you have helped us. For this past three, past three days, we want to return all the glory unto you. We want to thank you for what you have done. We thank you, Father God, for the testimonies, oh God, even concerning the lives of our children, because we will see these testimonies and we will be able to glorify your name. Thank you, everlasting Father. We give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're a mother, a wife, you're trusting God for, uh, for, uh, for children. Maybe you're not, you don't have children yet. I want us to pray for ourselves that as mothers, we will not labor in vain. I want us to pray that prayer for ourselves. Father, as a mother, I pray in the name of Jesus. I will not labor in vain in the name of Jesus. I pray for myself. I pray, Father God, in for as many, O oh God, that are linking up, O oh God, or those who will yet link up to this prayer. We will not labor in vain in the name of Jesus. We will not labor in vain in the name of Jesus. You will, you will preserve our lives, O oh God. In the hollow of your hands, you will cause us to be safe. Every arrow of death, every arrow of uh, untimely death that the enemy may be firing, we will not be targeting Jesus' name. We will not be targeting Jesus' name. We cover us with the blood of Jesus. We cover our, our children with the blood of Jesus. We cover our spouses with the blood of Jesus. We cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. We are safe in your care. We are safe in your hands. Thank you, everlasting Father. For this God is our God. Hallelujah forever and ever. And he will be our 
guide from now even till the end thank you jesus you are our god forever you are the god of our children you are the god of our next generation we worship and honor you thank you for how you have helped us we seal every Thing that we have prayed about in the blood of Jesus concerning our firstborn, concerning our sons, concerning our daughters, and concerning ourselves. We plead the blood of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus, oh God, walk in our favor. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. I just want to celebrate everybody who has been a part of this prayer since Monday. I pray that this, that, the, that your reward will be will be obvious in the name of jesus your your testimony will stand over the lives of your children in jesus name thank you for everyone who has been a part of it i appreciate you on instagram and on facebook thank you thank you thank you for everyone who sent me messages uh thank you god bless you we are pray we, we, we are trusting god that we will see the result and the testimonies from those prayers in jesus name. and when they come in please do feel free to share them not for my own self, but to the glory of God. When you share testimony, it encourages someone else even to pray. And I want you to know that prayer works. God bless you and have a wonderful evening. And um, I think um, I will let us know if there's any other prayer coming up or any other program. But, you know, like I said, for those who are not uh, who have not subscribed to my uh, YouTube channel, Possibilities Divine, go ahead and subscribe and be and uh, benefit from one or two things that we have there. Thank you, everyone. Amen to your prayers. The Lord bless you and have a wonderful evening. Before I let you go, what God has said concerning August, it's that it is a month that what you will see will be beyond what you can humanly do. A month of beyond human ability. A month of new wells. When I heard new wells, it means new ideas will come. You will start new projects. You start new things and you will benefit from them. A month of new inspiration, new ideas, and you will take higher heights. What God, I mean, what God said to us is that you will accomplish great feats that you would know that. In this month, it hasn't been by my power. The Lord will bring his word to pass. God bless you and have a good evening. Bye now. Yes, hallelujah. Jesus, we give you glory.